My name is John Passfield, and the title of this reading will be John and Mother Goose, Video 2, The Last Chapter. Here's my novella, John and Mother Goose, The Carnival of Tales. And here's the summary, which is printed on the back cover. While driving his granddaughter home from daycare, John suddenly finds himself standing in the midway of a carnival of Mother Goose fairy tales. He's greeted by Jack of Jack and Jill fame, who tells John that Mother Goose is expecting him, as she has a role for him to play. But what does Mother Goose really want? Why does she think John is a writer of detective stories? And why, when she meets John, does she greet him as almost a long-lost son? And for that matter, why does so many of the fairy tale characters have different stories that they want John to write for them instead of the ones in which they have lived for hundreds of years? John's not a mythical creature. He's only human after all. But can he save the Mother Goose Carnival? Can he solve the mystery of the vanishing fairy tale? Now, the last chapter in this story is chapter 10. Chapter 1 and chapter 10 have John in his everyday role as a grandfather who picks up his granddaughter, Savannah, at daycare and drives her to two stores, a coffee shop and a toy store, and drives her home to his house. Chapters 2 to 9 are the inner story in which John, as he drives along, has a daydream, which connects some of the elements of his everyday life, the singing of nursery rhymes in farmers' fields, and the elements of his cultural heritage, the thousands of years of stories and carnivals that used to come to the farmers' fields near the small towns of southern Ontario when he was a boy. In chapter 10, the final chapter, John continues driving his granddaughter to his home, to wait for her dad to pick her up while the daydream lingers faintly in his subconscious mind. So this is the last chapter, the final chapter. The daydream is over uh, as an active ingredient, I guess, and then it goes down into John's subconscious mind and lingers there. So here he is, post-daydream, driving his granddaughter home, heading home towards Cuba, sipping coffee as I drive. Snow is covering the farmer's fields, Soon the snow will melt away and it'll be spring. So his granddaughter singing in the back seat. Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Between books and brainstorming, the sponge is dry, the sponge will fill. Looking forward to starting the writing process again. Always a choice of topics, wondering what to write next. I'll go over my list and see what appeals to me. Continuing on. My granddaughter sings behind me. She walked up and down the aisle of the toy store, considering all the toys displayed on the shelves. Finally, she reached out her hand and took a little box from the shelf. Inside the box was a tiny unicorn. Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. Considering the nature of literature, the heart, the bones, the bedrock, the core, the nature of myth, the nature of folk stories, the nature of fairy tales as well. Perhaps one could say that a good story is all of these. A purple head and a golden horn, a flowing mane and a tiny brush. She's been singing and brushing the mane as we drive along. Milk and crackers and nursery rhymes and a view of farmer's fields. It's pretty good life for a little girl. One for my master and one for my dame. Thinking of those Russian dolls or the sarcophagi of the Egyptian kings where all the items fit inside one another and share the same form with more or less complexity and detail. So, a nursery rhyme is a fairy tale, is a folk story, is a myth. And all are both the same and not the same. I'm sure we can say that they do the same job in the world. I wish my wife were sitting beside me. She used to come on all these rides, grandmother and granddaughter singing together. They both knew all the nursery rhymes and one for the little boy who lives down the lane. 
The same blood flows through our veins as flowed through the earliest people on earth. They spent their lives with the same hopes and fears. They spent their days hunting and fishing. They spent their nights telling stories around a fire. Every thought and every action, all the benevolence and all the crimes, every accomplishment and every failure, all that humans have ever done, it's all there in the fairy stories. Boil down war and peace, and you have a children's rhyme. Pulling into the driveway, unbuckling my granddaughter's baby seat, my house could be called the House of Toys, a living room that rivals the toy store. There are toys from just about every fairy tale. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? But what of a story gives itself airs, attempts to tightrope, pretends to the throne? What if a story falls off the stage and is booed by the crowd? The world is bleeding. The world is on fire. What if a bandage has only the size to cover one wound? And then the last section. The pond is covered in ice today. Shoveled a walk before I left home. Sippy cup, day bag, and groceries. We walk to the porch and up the stairs. She's forgotten about the black sheep. Now she talks with the unicorn. She'll play until her daddy takes her home. Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. You drive your car, you sip your coffee, you write your books, you live your life. You sing the stories that you sang when you were a child. And that's the last line of the story. There's a note about that. As John drives along in the car with his granddaughter singing Baba Black Sheep in the back seat, He's fully conscious of all the everyday things in his world. He's conscious of the road on which he's driving. He's conscious of the farmer's fields between the small towns. He's conscious of his granddaughter singing Baba Black Sheep while combing the mane of a little toy unicorn that she chose when they topped at this toy store. He's also conscious of his role as a writer. He's between writing projects and is wondering what his next writing project just might be. Be. He used the image of a sponge which has been squeezed for the last writing project and is now empty and waiting to fill up again with ideas for the next writing project. What he's beginning to become conscious of as he drives along are the subconscious connections that his mind has been making between the singing of the nursery rhyme, Baba Black Sheep, and the great repository of nursery rhymes which has come down from hundreds, perhaps thousands of years of storytelling and the great literature from which he has taken the topics and the techniques of his writing projects, John is beginning to realize consciously the connections between the simplest nursery rhymes and the great complex, complex works of literature, like War and Peace. But he doesn't seem to be quite conscious that his everyday world can be the topic for a future work of literary art. Perhaps in the after novel, in the thought zone beyond the last chapter of this story, the subconscious thoughts that John has been daydreaming as he's been driving his granddaughter home from daycare will rise to the conscious surface of his mind and give him the topic of his next novel or novella. So he might go on to write this story. Uh, so this is my uh, novella, John and Mother Goose, The Carnival of Tales. It's available on Amazon if you look there and there's more information. It's available at Rocks Mills Press, R-O-C-K-S-M-I-L-L-S-P-R-E-S-S dot com, which is my publisher's website. There's more information there. At my website, johnpassfield.ca, J-O-H-N-P-A-S-S-F-I-E-L-D dot C-A. There are two free books. They pop up on your screen when you click on the icon. One is the planning notebook that I wrote while planning and writing this novella. The other is the journal which I wrote while I was polishing this novella. So if you click on johnpassfield.ca, you can read those books for free. Lastly, I'll just say thank you for watching this video.